Good evening, everyone. I give it a few minutes and wait on people to come in. I was on a prayer call, so I'm a little late getting on. But we're going to do week number two of 50 weekly Bible studies. So I'm giving it just a minute or so. Hope y'all had a good week. Hope that all is well with you and your families. Everything that concerns you is well. We're coming out of Luke chapter 6 on tonight. Luke chapter 6, verse number 45. Very common scripture. I see you, husband. I'm waiting on the people to come on. I know that we are still on a prayer call. reading Luke chapter 6 verse benefit of it being alive you can kind of give a few minutes and let people get on we'll be doing this every Tuesday around 8 o'clock between 8 and 8 10 so I'm up right on time Hey, overseer. Just trying to give y'all time to get on. I say we're finishing up a prayer call. So Pastor TJ is a man in that. Overseer Lily, I hope you had a good week. Our scripture for this week will be Luke chapter 6 verses 45. Um, this is week 2 of 50. And we're going to talk about I am doing well, thank you. Edifying the mouth by purifying the heart is our topic. Edify the mouth by purifying the heart. Here we go. Alright. So I'm going to read our scripture for tonight. As a good man out of the good treasure of his heart bringeth forth that which is good, and an evil man out of the evil treasure of his heart bringeth forth that which is evil, for of the abundance of the heart his mouth speaks. We have heard this scripture before. It's not anything new. This is a um, scripture that many of us quote and we have understanding of. We know that out of the Abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So guarding our heart is what's important. Edifying the heart, understanding that deeds and those types of things do not mean anything if the intent of our heart is wrong. So understanding that the heart is the mind. They are synonymous one with another. Whatever you speak from your heart, whatever you speak from your mind, manifests from the mouth. It comes through the mouth. Whatever you feel in your heart will manifest from the heart and from the mouth. So it's important to be mindful of that. It's, it's very important to be aware that whatever you speak should be guarded. So as we look at the scripture, and there were a couple of points, so I'm not going to be on long at all, not even nearly as long as I was last week, I was talking about a bramble bush. And when I read about a bramble bush, it says a bramble bush can be cutting, very painful. It has thorns and thistles. It is in the thickets, sticks. It hurts. It causes much pain. 
unto those who are around you. So we have to learn to guard our mouth. We have to learn to guard our heart. The thorn bushes can cause a lot of damage to others. And we don't understand the impact that we have when we speak out of our mind and out of our heart without guarding the words that come out of our mouth. So if we want to truly have a better heart, then we have to mind what comes out of our mouth. We have to mind what we watch and what we say, what we um, entertain as far as even general conversation with one another or with peers or with others that may be in our workplace or whatever the case. It's very important that we be mindful of what we allow in our ear gates, our eye gates, and our mouth, even in our nostrils. There is a stench that can be around you, that you're inhaling that air. You're breathing in the things that are around you. They're taking resonance in, resonance in your spirit and in your atmosphere. So we have to be cognizant of everything that we are around, and we need to be more guarded in the things that we do and the fashion that we present ourselves before others. So when we look at the text, and I'm reading from Luke chapter 6, verse 45, I've already read the scripture on tonight, but when we think about a good man, what does it say about a good man? A good man is one that sows good and not evil. It's one that does not cause division. They don't bring fear. They don't bring threats. They don't bring discord nor bitterness to their other brothers and sisters. They are loving. They are kind. They are servants. They believe in edifying one another. They believe in exhorting others. They believe in encouraging those who may not be in a place of encouragement. They may be in a place of despair, but because of who they are, once they receive that information from you, the words that come out of your mouth bring life to them and not death. Are we speaking in a fashion of life to one another? The fruit that comes out of our mouth is very important. We know that this is a time of year where we look for a harvest. It's the beginning of the year. We know that tax season is in April, so we're looking for a return. We're looking for something that we've invested in to be reinvested in us. We're looking for something to come back to us for the labor and the seeds that we've sown. So when we look a little bit deeper into the scripture, we understand that our fruit has to edify. It has to encourage. It has to be a part of who we are. It has to build up in order to yield a harvest. What we speak into the atmosphere, what we speak into the midst of a growth season for someone can determine how much they increase and it can determine how much they develop into their next level. So we really have to pay attention to the seasons that we're walking in, the time of God, the Kairos time of God and not our own Kronos time. The fact that there's a revelation and a resolution that's awaiting for us to release a word into it, just as if fertilizer comes and it gives life unto the soil. It gives life unto the plants. It gives an opportunity for those things to grow that have been hidden underground. Very, very careful of the gate in which we release things into people's lives. The fertilizer that can cause growth carries minerals and nutrients. It's God's way of sending a rain into the soil. It's his way of sending an opportunity for those nutrients to be packed further into the root. See, the deeper the root goes, the more grounded you are, the more that you'll stand sure-footed and you won't be pulled to and fro, the more that you'll be affirmed in who you are and when we understand that the rain and the nutrients of that environment are important one to another when we understand that the rain and the nutrients of the atmosphere that we're in creates a place of harvest. It creates a, a place of soil that is absorbent and ready to receive that which is being released into the earth realm. The thorns and the bramble bushes cause pain. They come to make you uncomfortable. They come to sometimes cause you to do a self-reflection. They come to bring you into a place of greater peace and a greater sought into your own soul. Who am I is the question that we ask. Is my mouth edifying or is it purifying of my heart? Is it truly speaking the intent of my heart? Is it truly speaking things that are of good? Is it truly speaking something that can build up and edify those around me or is it serving as a thorn in a bramble a 
a bush or something that's going to cause pain, something that's not going to allow that person to grow, something that will hinder them from being prosperous, something that will hinder them from accessing the gifts and the talents that are on the inside of them because they've been taught to hear the negativity. They've been taught and trained to receive the negative words that people speak into their lives out of the abundance of the heart. The mouth speaks out of the abundance of my mind. The things that I meditate on are the things that I begin to say about myself. So when I'm in that desperate season where I'm needing encouragement, I have to be very careful of what I allow in my space. The thorns and bramble bushes can cause me pain. There are different things that are the tongues that we know, the tongues of English, the tongues of native languages that we can speak towards one another can be disruptive to our character. It can be something that tears up from the inside out. It can be something that wreaks havoc in a situation of even peace, in a situation of prosperity, in a situation of growth and maturity. That seed in itself, whatever we're sowing, out of our mouth can bring life or it can bring death we know that there is life and power there's life and death that lies in the tongue so with the life i want to speak power i want to speak encouragement i want to speak edification i want to exhort the uh, people who are around me when i hear or when i think about what the tongue can do and the lethal weapon i can cut and i can divide or i can sew and pull it all together i can thread it through a needle i can weave a, a true covering for someone who may need to be comforted in their time of distress, who may not need to hear the negativity of where they come out of. So being mindful that what we release can bring shame, it can bring condemnation, it can bring negativity, it can bring damnation, and it can bring blasphemy unto the things that we believe. See, when we think about Christ and what he did out of the 12 disciples, he only took three to the mountain with him. Why did he only take those three? Because he had faith in them. He had edified all of the 12, but yet yet he only took three, the three that he would pour into, the three that he would build up, the three that he would edify, the three that he would continue to feed. When we look at verse 21 in the same chapter of Luke 26, it says he's filled with the Holy Spirit. There was something good that was on the inside of them. There was something that was manifesting a glory wave. There was something that would give them words of exhortation and admiration for others. There was something positive that was growing on the inside of them. When was the last time we took time to groom our Holy Spirit? When was the last time that we laid hands on ourselves and began to declare the works of the Lord over ourselves? We speak to our inner being, to our own womb, and begin to prophesy to our womb that there is a product on the inside of you that must manifest from your mouth. We must edify one another. We must convert our hearts to be that which is pure. We must bring our standing into something that is of great grace and great admiration. It is something that we desire to see that we speak over our lives. The scripture tells us to speak those things that be not as though they were in the past tense, meaning that they have already happened even though I may not have arrived at that point yet. There is something waiting on me that I have spoke into my future. So what are you declaring into your future? What are you declaring even into your now what are you looking forward to in your next manifestation what are you seeking in your next place and in your next position being of good character and chatter being of good character and chatter prevent corrupt discard from being produced out of what you are assigned to edify Whatever it is that you are assigned to edify is what will come out of your mouth. Whatever you are drawn to will be the things that will speak out of your mouth. So God had me to look at this text and he said, I want you to give the first thing, the characteristics of fruit. And I said, okay, God, well, we've talked about the fruit of the spirit. He said, yes, but I'm not dealing with the fruit of the spirit so much as I am just dealing with fruit, a characteristic of a fruit, a mature ovary of a plant produces that which contains seeds. And that is where we get the fruit. The fruit is actually an out of the ovary of a plant. That's where it's produced. If we think about even human ovaries, we carry the egg to seed. Once the seed from the man hits the egg, then we have a fertile 
fertilization and life comes forth. So when we're looking at the fruit and we're looking at the fact that we are an ovary, we're carrying something that is yet to be fermented, that is yet to be in a place where it can bring growth and maturity into something that is far greater. So there are three types of flowering plants that produce fruit. One is an annual and only fruit must die. This particular fruit, the annual fruit, the flower must die and it grows only in a single season. So when we think about people, when we think about the maturity of Christian walk and we think about who we are in the kingdom, are we growing just in one season? Are we just annual? Did we only produce once and that was it? We didn't bother to go back and do even our first works over again? Did we quit because the produce, the end of product that we saw wasn't the product that we thought it should have been? Or did we become even a biannual, which means that they only flower once, but they grow for two seasons. They may only flower once. They may develop into something really beautiful initially and then they just begin to recreate themselves they produce another flower in the following season but the thing about it I'm sorry they produce another fruit in the following season but the flower dies in the second season that is a biennial the first flower comes forth and it grows again for the second season but in that second season there is no flower but yet there is fruit what are we doing in our works when we do our first works over when we continue to press and do the works of God that he has given them the kingdom works that we've been given to do are we just giving up in that first annual are we pushing to a biannual where we begin to produce at least for two seasons then we get the courage out of the first and the second season to say hey maybe I can do this so we start to go into a perennial where we grow for many years and the flowers repeat themselves by repeating the good works of who we are by repeating those things which we've been given to do and watching them grow and manifest each and every season we should be getting greater each and every time we come forth not just in ministry on a platform but in life every day when we leave home we should reach more and more than what we reached the day before if it's not with the word of God at least let it be a demonstrative word through our living through our speaking through our inhabitation of our our areas and the places that we impact the places that we have our most in impact are usually the places that we spend more hours well most of us spend more hours away from home than we do at home so when we look at the fruit tree we want it to be a repetitive cycle of repeating fruit it doesn't matter whether I'm at the same company a different company a different country none of that matters what matters is what am I producing in my fruit am I producing a fruit that can be reproduced into a place of greatness a place of greater than what we were in before a fruit tree produces fruit it's utilized for human food the fruits that grow on one large foundation they have one base they have a place that has roots in the soil where is our home where are we grooming where are we gleaming and where are we reproducing what are we seeing that comes out of the place that we call a foundation out of that foundation should come works that have been imparted into us works that have been planted and seeded as the mature ovary begins to reproduce to produce more fruit each and every time it exits fruits that grow on trees fruits that emit something that is far greater than whatever it was when you first encountered it so then he had me look at the plants and the bushes which have multiple veins and leaves and I was like God why are we comparing a plant I know that a, a tree and a plant are totally different I know that a bush is totally different and he said because I want you to understand that plants and bushes both have veins and leaves now the distinct thing about the ovary is it's a reproduction it's a place of new seeds what we produce with our seeds determine a harvest or a drought what we produce with our seeds determines a harvest or a drought. Whatever we sow into, it has to bring back something that is far greater than what we released. The, so, the soil has to be tended to in order for things to take root. Who's tending to your soil?
Where is your foundation? What are you being fed? Who are you sitting under? Are you growing in that ministry? Are you growing in that place of development? Are you growing in that place where you've planted and you've released seed and you've released fruit into the ground through the ovary, the mature ovary of who you are, you have poured into others. Are those others beginning to rise up? Are they beginning to walk in their set places in ministry? Are they beginning to take their positions on their jobs? Are they moving up and advancing far beyond who you are? Are they moving into a place where their recognition is beginning to gain them access to greater things? Is their income increasing? Is their knowledge base increasing? Is their wisdom that they're speaking? Are you noticing the transition and the change that's happening for them because you have come out of your place of comfort. You have come out of your place of complacency and you begin to stretch yourself to go forth and to begin to cultivate the ovaries of other people to watch them reproduce the fruit. It's all a cycle. It's a divine cycle that is created to become an annual and a perennial where it happens every season. It doesn't just occur once or twice and have a flower that no longer creates but it begins to flower and bloom and blossom into other flowers and other fruit. The soil has to be tended to in order for those things to take root. If we remain in a place of fruitfulness, we must learn to evaluate ourselves for immaturity. That statement was powerful to me. It says, if we remain in a place of fruitfulness, we must learn to evaluate ourselves for immaturity, meaning there were times when we could have been more mature about a thing, but because of our lack of understanding, our lack of wisdom, our lack of self-analyzation. See, I like to do periodic evaluations of myself. I want to know, am I progressing or do I still look like the person that I was five years ago? Have I progressed in my knowledge and my wisdom and my seeking to know more about the things that interest me so that I can have a good conversation? or a dialogue with someone who is on common ground, who is standing on the same foundation as me. It's important that I'm able to understand their dialect and their understanding of my dialect, that we share our visions and our purpose and they begin to mesh and they begin to say, how can I help you? And I begin to say, how can I help you? And then we know that we're sowing good fruit, that we're releasing something out of our ovaries that is of benefit to others around us, not the immaturity of not progressing or hatefulness or injury be or lack of or not paying attention to someone else's vision because we're so wrapped into our own not understanding that the seed that I need to sow may be into their prosperity it may be into their next that I release something that could very well help them to catapult them into their future it's not about me it's all about God in his glory so if he chooses to use me to sow and to be a part of an ovary that can produce something that will be more mature than where I am why would I fail to do that why would I fail to position myself to pour out into something that could potentially be greater than me if my maturity level says let the older train the younger let the younger suck from the older we have got to feed back into that which is growing around us and under us moving on inspect your fruit we know that the FDA inspects the fruit before it ever reaches the shelves. There's something called the Holy Spirit, which will govern us, which will hold us into accountability, which will inspect our fruit. It will see, is it worthy? Just as Jesus went to the fig tree out of season, expecting to see fruit, and there was nothing on the tree. We don't want to be caught without anything on our tree. We want to have some ovaries that are producing fruit. We want to be inspected by the Holy Spirit to know that if we need to be convicted, that we can be convicted, but never condemned. We can be changed. We can be converted. We can be recalibrated. We can be represented. We can be helped along the way to become greater than what we were before. Only with the guidance and leading of the Holy Spirit, let it inspect our fruit. Let it bring us to a place of conviction. Let it push us to where we'll seek greater wisdom and knowledge, where it can govern us and guard us, and it can create in us our own fruit, which can be reproduced. It governs and guards. It present what comes into our months when we yield, what comes into our mouths, I'm sorry, when we yield, what comes out of our mouths will begin to change and we'll notice that we're in a place where we're not 
spewing thistles and thorns, but we're speaking fruit. We're speaking manifestation. We're speaking victory. We're declaring overcomers. We're declaring overflow. We're declaring greatness. We're declaring the greater works shall they do than what we do. When we look at verse six, uh, chapter 6 and verse 44, the thorns will keep us from a harvest. The thorns and the thistles that we spew out of our mouth will keep us from gaining the harvest that has been prophesied over our life. It will keep us from gaining access to the great promises that we've been given because we're in a place where we're no longer inspecting our fruit. We're in a place where we're not being governed by the Holy Spirit. We've fallen into a place of the world instead of walking in the spiritual realm. We've fallen because we are in a place of comparison and we're in a place of envy and strife and bitterness instead of being in a season of celebration one for another where we're looking for the next one who will have the victory where we're cheering and encouraging those who need to come up to come up a little higher and we're not leaving them in a place where they are not being taught or trained that we're pulling them along with us that we're pushing them to the next place that we're bringing them into the forefront of what is yet in front of them negative talk complaining a flat affect mumbling comparison what are we treasuring in our heart? What is it that we're hiding? What is it that we're afraid to speak good things and good tidings into the others? What do you store in your heart? What do you store in your heart? What is it that you're storing in your heart that you're speaking that is not bringing fruit, but it's causing thistles and thorns to grow? Guard the tongue, guard the spirit, guard the heart, guard the mind of what enters into you. Watch your company, watch those that are around you, watch what you listen to, watch what you hear, watch what is being in planted in your ear gate. Watch the ovaries that are being imparted into your soul and into your spirit. Search the soul. Review your past relationships. Yes, there's always a chance for reflection. Within that reflection, you go and you review your past relationships and you ask yourself, did I govern myself accordingly? How did I handle that situation? Could I have handled it differently? What was it that pulled us apart? Ask God the question. What is it that you're saying, God? What is it that you're wanting me to see out of this relationship so that I can grow and won't fall back into that place your past relationships not to judge them but to do a self assessment am I to take the wasteland out of myself how am I to purge myself if I never take accountability or review the things that I've done from my past am I to be a wasteland or am I to be a fresh soil for growth and for nurturing. How do I get to that point of being a fresh soil to grow and to nurture? I allow the Holy Spirit to convict me. I allow a period of reflection. I re we don't stay in that period of reflection. We go there to understand what we did, that we can be held accountable for ourselves, not judging the other person, but looking at our own selves and saying, I did this wrong when I did X, Y, and Z. Saying, I did this right when I did X, Y and Z and understanding that those relationships are sustained based on what came out of my mouth, how my heart was perceiving those individuals that are around me, how my heart was helping fulfill those things that were around me, building up and edifying those people who were connected to me, what is coming out of my heart, what is manifesting in the victory want you to understand and it's very important that we govern ourselves by governing our heart gov governing our mouth and governing our ear gate our eye gate and this gate that we release more than we receive what we release determines where we go it determines our harvest it determines our ovary and the growth and the maturity of our fruit this has been Pastor Robin Watson, Bishop Elect Robin out of Houston, Texas. I thank God for you all. I thank you for being on my live tonight. I thank God for Overseer Lily. Thank you for your encouragement. My husband, Pastor TJ Watson, love you dearly, sweetie. We are doing this for the next 48 weeks now. We are down. Um, we had started off with 50 weeks. We are on week number 
48 next week. So we thank God for you and we pray that you will tune in, share this video, invite someone else to watch the live. It's for edifying. It's for building up. It's called the year of exhortation is what I heard God say. He said 50 lessons of exhortation, encouraging, edifying, and building up one another. Enough with the tearing down. We're moving into a greater place of victory. And in order to achieve that victory, we have got to build one another up. Where is your foundation? What are you standing on? What is coming out of your mouth? Guard it. It's your gate. You're the one that's in control. God bless you. Y'all have an awesome night.